Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm talking about the latest episode of Instinct as well as the latest episode of Deception. Like always, if I talk about something that you don't want to listen to, you can always look in the description down below. I include a time when I start talking about each of the respective shows. So, for example, if you want to hear what I say about this week's episode of Instinct, you can skip to what I say about this week's episode of Deception. But the first thing I want to talk about is this week's episode of Instinct. This week's episode, very sad episode, just obviously on a very personal level because this case is very personal uh, to Jasmine because one of her friends in this episode died. And it's kind of interesting because I was like, huh, so I was like, oh, so we're starting a case here, like, after everything's kind of happened. But it's like, nope, like, it starts there, kind of like a a code open, and then you kind of rewind back a little bit. Base, also, in this episode, we also got introduced to uh, Jasmine's fiancé, David. That was kind of interesting. Um... So it turns out that basically she has a friend, Abby. Abby's like a CEO, and basically she owns like a basketball team, and basically she's moving them to another place. And uh, like I think it's what it like where was she moving them to? I think Las Vegas. Yeah, and it was like obviously sports fans being who they are. A lot of people upset about it. Uh, but Abby kind of like ends up driving off the road. So it's like, is it a suicide? But it's like, no. She left a nine one one message, and that was kind of like, oh, someone's trying to kill her. And it seemed like she was on her way there during the whole drive. It seemed like she was driving erratic because she crashed into cars and stuff like that. So the episode was trying to figure out who was behind her. Like, yeah, obviously, it seems like there might be some suspects here and there. Um, also, like, the, what is different about her? Because obviously her and um, Jasmine go back a very long way. They've been friends since they were younger. Um, obviously, they kept they were super tight when they were younger. But obviously, as they got older, things just came up. She was being super busy, kind of dealing with the stress of everything, so her and Jasmine weren't hanging out as much as they used to, so... And it's something that Dylan kind of immediately latched onto because he was noticing that there was, like, especially when you look at some of the videos and stuff like that, like, she seemed very different over the course of time. Like, even, like, within the past three years, like, you compare that to a year later to, like, something more recently, just, like... Like, even at the party at the beginning, Jasmine had noted the fact is that Abby was kind of like, she had this episode where she kind of freaked out, kind of almost like an anxiety attack. And, like, she was telling people not to touch her, just like, you know, just because it seemed like she was overwhelmed. The sad truth is we end up finding out it's because her husband was abusing her. He was choking her, and that prolonged choking over years was starting to damage her brain, and it started coming out in those just kind of her, because even one of the phone numbers that she called in the episode, Jasmine ended up pointing out that that was actually her old home number where her mom, you know, like what she get in contact with her mom, but her mom died years ago. Obviously, like in her mind, in her state of mind, she was she was trying to call something to something to hold on to, you know, that's what that was like. She, you know, like I said, she wasn't thinking she was kind of in a uh, panic mode just because it turns out like her husband had threatened her at the party like oh deal with this at home and so she knew like oh my god that's what the call was about he's he's trying to kill me and, like she knew her husband was going to kill her so and because you know it hits jasmine hard because for her, it's like i have no idea i've been here complimenting like oh her she has such a great marriage she has a perfect husband and it's like he's been doing this to her doing it in a way that it won't leave marks the whole situation with um the um made she had actually seen this and it was like oh there's the whole break-in situation which the whole break-in situation which is cover for what he had been doing to her and the maid had seen that but you know she's the one that called the police and they kind of had to spin it be like no 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 no, don't look into it it's fine you know making it seem like some stuff was stolen here and there even going as far as trying to make it seem like oh no no uh we we like he, her husband russell was like oh no no the maid she's kind of undocumented so i don't want her to get in any trouble it's like trying to make it seem like he's so kind and caring and he's just a garbage person behind all because he threatened to get her deported because she saw what he was doing so that even running away like she did abby was it was just subconscious because she was like she needed to get away this was like her only chance like you know and even if this hadn't killed her, like, during that accident, he, like, what he had done to her had done, you know, extensive damage, and that would have been enough to kill her anyway, you know? And it's just, it's sad. Because it's so interesting, because I wasn't expecting that to be, you know, how this whole, because obviously everything in the episode is kind of leading well. This has to do with what she did, um, you know, because making decisions like that was because she wasn't really, necess- well, because I think um, Dylan had talked about the fact is, like, moving the team was her subconscious way of being, it kind of her subconscious being like, oh, get away, like just some way to get away from him. That's what the whole team thing was. It was kind of a manifestation of that sub- subconscious desire to get away from her husband. But like I said, it's kind of interesting because obviously every entire episode is kind of dealing with like, no, 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 no. It's all about, um, 
you know, kind of like, oh, it must be one of the rabbit fans or something like that. It's like, no, nope, it was her husband. Because it's interesting because it kind of like on the same note. I mean, it's actually kind of a big theme this episode is relationships. And one side of that is uh, Dylan's relationship with um, Andy. Because Dylan's not much of a sport person, which apparently Andy is. He's like really into sports, in particular basketball. But it's something that they don't connect on. Obviously for Dylan, it's also because, like, because of their schedules lately. They haven't been spending enough time together. But it's also because he's, you know, being who he is, trying to understand behavior. He thought, he'll, you know, understand why Andy's so fascinated with basketball, why he's so into sports, would help him. But it almost seems like he almost, like, demeans, like, the sport, kind of making it almost seem barbaric and just like, oh, only people who are into it are, you know, who need to lash out some aggression or something like that. He undermines and um, belittles kind of, like, that past how much I, I mean I get like I mean I also understand where Dylan's coming from it's like yeah obviously you're gonna have that perspective because you're not very you know sports really isn't your thing and but for him it's like because for him like he understands Andy him they 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 match on this intellectual level uh but it's like for him it's like I don't know how to connect to Andy on this level like an emotional level because you know I think even though he under, I think it's that kind of aspect of because you even if you understand something kind of at the taking that into your own personal life is probably hard like he probably understands human behavior very well but probably the emotional side of things kind of his own behavior and stuff like that is something he you know he can't always kind of turn it around on himself so and you know and he's talked about it like he's the one that speaks you know dylan he understands dylan when dylan doesn't understand himself you know but it also comes down to the fact that dylan was just jealous it's like you know this is like, you know, sports was never a thing for him. He was always kind of picked last. So, you know, sub I guess subconsciously, like it's always kind of been there. So he kind of bashes on sports a little bit just to kind of compensate for the fact is that he was never picked for stuff. If, if he was picked last. And there's this one thing right here that Andy's so passionate about. And that's like an aspect of his life that he feels like he can't really tackle. I mean, it seems like by the end of the episode, it seems like he's slowly in that direction. Whether he's going to be a full on fan like Andy. I mean, I don't know. Because you could tell, like, he really was into it. He's like, oh, wow. Oh, all right, right, right. Yeah, the team scored. Yeah, uh, when is it over? I mean, actually, the game's still going on. So, you know, so that was kind of an interesting perspective. Also, they did this aesthetic thing that I like in the episode. I like, I always love that they keep changing up the aesthetic. Like, in certain aspects, like, for one, like, when he was listening to Tomahawk or, like, the podcast, and it's like, oh, he's kind of, like, walking over, and, the, like, the, the text like the text pops up, you know, mid air for him, you know, for, for the, obviously the context of the show, everything he's saying, I was like, that's aesthetic. I just, I like how aesthetically that looks. That was kind of neat. Just how the way they represented that, I guess, you know, just kind of representing the fact that he's focusing on it very heavily. And all of his, obviously when, like when he was figuring out everything that was happening in the Abbey, it was like, Oh, like it was almost like, like, he was remembering, like, something he'd heard probably from a doctor. I mean, especially the way his memory works. It was most likely, like, a study that he uh, he heard one of his teachers or professors kind of talk about in the past. Or maybe just some information he had come across at some point in time about kind of, like, you know, choking and um, being deprived of air and that shape. You know? So that's just kind of another interesting twist to the episode that I kind of... Not twist, but just kind of a an aesthetic aspect to the episode because usually it's him kind of like it was it was the usual thing of like him kind of like understanding you know picturing everything out you know because he, he you know he's kind of caught up in the middle of that bar fight which is like no one wants to be in a bar fight with Dylan I mean because I was kind of, I was almost halfway expecting him to kind of you know kick a little ass during that like to calm some dude down some dude kind of punch, tries to punch him he takes the dude down I thought I was going to didn't so. But luckily, Andy and some others are kind of able to kind of keep everything together, which I guess it kind of plays into what Dylan was kind of talking about with the whole sports thing, like that mentality people have and stuff like that. It's just kind of interesting. But the other side of things deals with Lizzie because there's that uh, mechanic dude, Steve, that Dylan was like, oh, yeah, like, are you single? Because I have a friend like he's really heavily pushing uh Lizzie towards it, which because for him, it's like the fact of the matter is I'm not telling you like it's going to be easy to be completely over Charlie or anything like that. But it's like the fact of the matter is she's like the fact is you're joking, like, you know, all these little aspects, you know, that he kind of notices about her. The fact of the matter is he's kind of like you're engaged the way you're engaging in the conversation and stuff like that. You're joking around like you're willing to give it a try. And I think that's well worth kind of investigating, you know, and obviously she makes excuses throughout the episode. You even had the other detectives kind of poking fun of her. It's like, yo, you got a day. Good on you, Lizzie. Because they're like, yo, they know what she's been through and they just want to see her kind of happy. It's kind of like the whole aspect of like she didn't hang out with them as much anymore because of the whole Charlie situation. So it's also I, I really like because like we're seeing like different. Obviously, like these are like different sides to the whole relationship 
relationship aspect. Obviously, Abby had her terrible situation with Russell, but obviously you have a good situation like Andy and Dylan. And you also have like this whole like, oh, Lizzie's trying to like figure this whole thing out. Because obviously her, the date with Steve, it seemed like it was going terrible because she was like showing him crime scene photos and stuff like that. She was so focused on work. I was like, oh, man, I was like, oh, that sucks. He's like, yeah, I feel like I'm second. I was like, because in my mind, I was like, OK, because this probably is a little hard for her because it's like. Charlie was a cop too, so they probably did a lot of that cop talk. So for her, it's like, you know, like that's that was a part of her life that she shared with him. So it's like going to back and forth, like, oh, I had this day at work. It's like, I'm oh, me too, you know? It's like experiences that they both could relate to. So I'm sure that probably played a role and just like, that's probably why they kind of clicked too, is because he understood that side of her. But it turns out Steve was a cool dude. It's like, no, 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 no. He was like, I felt, he felt bad because he felt like he was pulling her away from work. It's like, no, she needs to focus on work. I didn't appreciate the fact is that she was like asking Dylan at one point, so you got any other theories? And Dylan was like, yeah. He's like, wait a minute. You're using me, aren't you? The fact of the matter is you're making excuses so that I can keep going so you can just have excuses just to go stay here and work instead of um, actually going on this day. Because even the captain knew, I mean, not captain, yeah, Captain. Um, even uh, Jasmine knew that she was. Wait, she's not a captain. Is she captain or lieutenant? I think she's lieutenant. It's the proper doc. Nevertheless, Jasmine was like, "Wait, what did she? What happened on the date?" Even she knew about it. So it's kind of like spread around like that. I love it. Which I'm sure Lizzie didn't like the fact is kind of her love life situation kind of being on blast and everyone kind of, you know, be it being a talk amongst their little group. But I thought that's kind of neat. So it's just kind of nice. Um, and also the fact is that um. The whole thing at the end where Lizzie's, you know, practicing with Sergeant Harris, and he's just, and then like, he's like and then you have Dylan walking out. It's like, oh, I hope I'm not interrupting. It's like, he's like, no, thank God you came, because, you know, I need, I need to, you know, I, I need to go. You know, he's just like, I need to go call a doctor or something, because like, it's like, yeah, Lizzie was going hard, dude. It's like, holy crap. It's like, it doesn't seem like Lizzie takes anything, like, slowly. It seems like she kind of goes in 100%, maybe even 110. So... But it seems like she's kind of taking those steps herself because Dylan's like, the f I, and I thought it was kind of a nice friend thing too. He was like, the fact of the matter is you think I wouldn't, like I looked at him up and down, like I knew, like he's like, I under I analyzed his behavior before I even suggested he, you go on a date with him. It's like, it's almost like, yo, I got your back. Like if I'm suggesting you go out with some dude, obviously I'm going to check him out to make sure, okay, there's this, 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 and this, some behavior issues, like, you know, try and suss him out, you know, a little bit based on who Dylan is and the way his mind works and just about behavior analysis. And I thought that was kind of a neat thing but lizzie had already taken the steps herself apologizing and everything and so they're going on another date so it's really nice that she has taken those steps forward so i thought that's kind of a neat little um step in direction for her it's also interesting too the um the dude in this episode yuri the one that was kind of like um russell's fixer he was the one taking pictures following um abby uh, he ends up talking about he wants a favor from Lizzie in the future. I was like, huh, that's kind of interesting. Like, it's like, yeah, I do this for you, helping you track down the maid. It's like, uh, maid Sophia. It's like, then you can help me. Was it housekeeper or maid? I don't know if that is a big difference or not. I guess, because in my mind, I treat those as the same thing, but I think housekeeper was probably like the term they use, but I think maid is, just, uh, I don't know. Um, but it's like, he was like, oh yeah, you owe me a favor. Like, I could hope that I could come to you for a favor in the future. I'm going to lie. That's interesting. That's almost like, okay. That seems like such a little thing, but it also seems like that might turn into something much bigger later on. It almost seemed a little ominous too, so that could be foreshadowing a lot. So I'm very interested where that goes down. But overall, a very nice episode. I like, like I said, I mean, very sad about what the story was, but at the same time, I do like that it did kind of build on these other stories, like these other relationships kind of developing in the show. So I thought that was kind of a nice back and forth angle to the show kind of like the bad side of the relationship type of things and then like kind of the more uh challenging and trying to figure stuff out type of angle when it comes to relationships and stuff like that so i thought that was kind of neat so very interested to see what goes down in the next episode and now moving on to this week's episode of Deception. This is kind of like a very uh, redemption heavy episode, kind of all across the board. Um, obviously, you know, uh, the main uh, cop in this episode, uh, Maslin, he's kind of searching for kind of redemption as well as Jordan and Cameron. Jordan, not as much. I mean, he gets it a little bit from Dina and Gunter about the whole like him being the only one who knew about the whole situation with Cameron. You were in contact with him. You even kind of helped with this whole situation a little bit, but you didn't tell us. And so they're kind of pissed at him. But even then, it's not as bad as everyone else. Because everyone, you know, Maz Maslin's situation is kind of more like his entire career is at stake. And Cam, like, 
uh, team, this friendship he's built, you know, between the deception team and the FBI. That's kind of all in jeopardy, essentially. Um, main overall plot deals with a cop who witnessed a crime, but when he wakes up, it's like, whoa, 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 nothing, whoa, oh, so this was, okay, so this really didn't happen. Did they ever, they never really went over it, but that clerk at the beginning, like, like, he was, like, did he ever pop up again? Was it ever brought up, like, how that clerk fit in on it? I guess he was just some dude that was hired to do it. I don't remember ever explaining that whole situation. Maybe they did, and I just, like, completely blinked over it for whatever. But I don't remember that clerk ever coming back up in the episode. That was, that was kind of an interesting thing. But basically, Maslin talked about the fact that he witnessed a crime, but there was no evidence of it. So it looked like he was just kind of crazy. And Maslin kind of has a past of drinking and stuff like that. He got cleaned up, but it was still kind of like a, oh, everyone just thought he was crazy. But Cam looked at the case, and obviously he was like, okay, certain things didn't kind of line up. Obviously, when the clerk ended up running away and throwing some of the evidence in the back of a dumpster truck, you know, obviously that was a clear mode uh, thing, too, as well. It's kind of sad, too, because at first Maslin was like, oh, for it, because obviously Cam was pretending like he was full on FBI, but it's like, oh, you're actually just a magician. Do you even work with the FBI? It's like, yeah, I mean, sort of, yeah. I mean, especially under the circumstances they are right now, so. But basically, it turns out that there was corruption in uh, the police station that he worked in. Uh, there was that cop, Leo Baker. Interesting to me, I just find so fascinating. He was, He's also um, one of the cops in the show Instinct, like. I don't know, I just think that's kind of interesting that he's in this and there's another... It's just interesting how that kind of just plays out like that. But, um, essentially, they were dirty cops, essentially. And Maz, Maslin kind of got brought up in, like... Because for him, he says the reason why he was investigating stuff, like, I didn't do nothing bad then, I didn't do nothing bad now. It's just because people see my... You know, it's like, oh, it's that dual side. It's like, when you're outside in this room, the interrogation room, everyone sees you one way, but inside, it's like, oh, you're almost like looked at as you're just automatically guilty. So I was like, even if you did nothing wrong, because for him, it's like, I, I'm a good cop. I, I sobered up. Yeah, I used to drink, but I sobered up and I've done a good job and I'm just kind of, you know, no one wants to believe me. No one's trying to see the truth of it. So, so because for Cam, this is also for him, it's like, well, Maslin is also being framed, but this is also kind of similar. Like I said, the similar thing of Cam's trying to make up everything with the FBI, I guess it seems like Deacons is the one that was kind of holding out against him, but it turns out it's not. It seems like, especially because she ended up calling him Cam this episode, even Cameron's like, you heard that? She just called me Cam. It's like, I've heard Cameron's, but Cam, it's like, I'm like, oh my God, like Deacons is sh like slowly but surely warming up to him. I should have figured as much when she was telling Cam, like him and Jordan to follow uh, that uh, drug dealer, Alex. Uh, they're like, we're, we're not, we're not following. It's like, yes, you are. Keep following. And, like, and he's like, okay. Oh, she, she hung up on him. Also, pretty slick of Jordan doing what he did, like uh, slipping those drugs off the dude uh, with, the, you know, with a fake hand and then just sliding his real hand through the jacket. I was like, that's pretty sneaky. I was like, that's so inch, that's so cool. Uh, I just love the little things that they do like that. But it seems like the one who had the biggest problem with him was Kay. Because for her, it's like, not only did you do all this stuff behind my back, it's, it's because she was worried the most, more so than anything. It's because he did something and that could have almost got him killed. Like, this was kind of, you know, it's like, yeah, just her partner and all of this, she cares about him. So she was almost terrified that he was going to die. So that's what really kind of shook her up about the whole situation. So that's why she was keeping him at a distance. Plus the whole like, yeah, you lied. You didn't actually tell me, you know? So, and obviously the same thing came up with the team too. He even apologized later on because he's the reason why the team kind of got divided. Because he put them in that situation by making Jordan kind of lie to the others. Which is so interesting about Jordan, too. Like, Jordan kind of goes with things. And, you know, I don't think, like, even when the team was kind of boxing him out, he didn't really, he, he saw what was going on. But, like, it seems like Jordan, like, flows a little bit differently than everyone. Because he just kind of lets stuff kind of go, okay, whatever. And he's super blunt, too. Because when, uh, he's like, it's like, oh, wow, man. He was talking to Cameron. He's like, man, everyone hates you. Uh, K, Deacons. No, it's like Dina, Gunter, K, this dude, man, it's like everyone's pissed at you. And it's like, that's such a, like I said, like he didn't have to say that in a lot of times. Like I said, he doesn't really think a lot of times when he just says something, he just kind of says it. It's just kind of like, it seems like tact isn't one of his things. At least that's how I feel. So it's just kind of interesting how that works out. But I did like what they did with the whole deception of the, um, the like the whole put on a performance, getting him arrested and everything because he was trying to break into Baker's car. And then Kay came in there kind of grilling him. They're like, oh, we can't help you now. And he's like, wow, Oscar performance. Like, if you, if you can, this whole FBI thing, you, you don't always like be like an illusion, like, you know, a magician afterwards because you're, you're good at just deceiving people. That's so good. 
But also, like, because I love what they do, too, is because they not only fool the people, like, they're fooling, but also even the audience, because it's like, oh, Dina's giving him these directions, and I guess maybe he legitimately was confused, but maybe that's kind of to fit it more, because, I mean, I guess maybe he really did get lost, but it almost seemed like every room was purposeful, like, each misdirection almost made it, like, oh, seem like he was trying to go, I mean, it's also interesting, too, that no one on that side of the building was there, I thought that was kind of interesting, I don't know, you didn't see any cops running around, neither, so I thought that was kind of interesting, maybe that was kind of supposed to be a key sign, too, I was like, maybe something's up here, because it's like, huh, that's, I just thought that was kind of interesting, and Baker ended, I was wondering how they were going to play that whole thing out, I wasn't expect. like, I figured, like, it'd be like, oh, they did something to the glass, and now he's confessing in front of one, sure, I wasn't expecting, it's like, oh, yeah, the moment he flipped on the light, he actually uh, clicked on a projector that showed um, a different room, I was like, that's so genius, that was not, I didn't know what to expect, I sure as hell wasn't expecting that, so that was kind of good deception, you know, so... Everything kind of worked out in the end. Maslin, you know, becomes a detective, so everything's good. You know, he's kind of got his reputation back. Cam made good with the FBI. Like I said, it seems like the only one who really had the biggest problem with him was Kay. Um, and everything seems good with the uh, team deception. So other things that we kind of have to break down about the episode, too, is what Gunter came across was very fascinating. Basically, he came across Aleister Black's um, kind of secret room. Because it seems like... Alistair, the the thought process is that all those, you know, rich people that he was surrounding himself with, he was building stuff for them. But whatever it is that he built for them, he's kind of booby-trapped the whole place down there upon Gunter finding it. Which, I obviously, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting, too, because, like, even though Gunter was like, I'm going to do all this by myself. By the, like, when he was kind of like, oh, wait, hold on, help, I need help with something. It's like, he was calling for Jordan. I was, I just think that's fascinating. Um... Because, like, you know, Jordan's kind of like, I mean, and it's something, what's her name? The lady that's very good at um, reading people, she ended up discussing the fact is that, you know, Gunter kind of looks at Jordan like a son. So it's just kind of interesting. But nevertheless, um, he went in there, found a box, and it seemed like some stuff from Sparking. I don't know whether it's necessarily that the room got destroyed. It might more so be like, okay, some of the stuff, I mean, that message he left on the record player might have been the only thing that kind of short circuit, but, you know, Gunter made sure to get out of there before anything. So it, it does seem like the room's probably not damaged or anything. But, you know, it's kind of warning that he will, like, any who try to seek these secrets will die. So, for one, there's that skull that's in the box, which is like, is that a real skull or not? I mean, Gunter kind of believes it to be so. But also all the rumors about Aleister Black, I guess kind of him being kind of like a terrible guy because there was even a table in there that had straps in it so it's like did he experiment on people and stuff like that like because that's like it's something i've kind of already talked about like whatever this whole situation is with the mystery woman it has to be about cameron's family in particular his uh isn't his grandfather yeah grandfather alistair because it's like um, it seems like maybe Alistair was on the darker side of things, or may maybe it's a situation we end up finding out. Maybe that could be like a tort, like not necessarily, well, kind of a torture room, but an interrogation room. Maybe that's what it was supposed to be. Because of who Alistair was, maybe he was good at, very good at breaking people. And that's what those billionaires kind of knew him for. It's like, oh, I want you to, or other people, maybe not even just them, maybe people could, like I said, maybe that's what this whole mystery woman thing is about, because she is coming after them because of something his their grandfather did that maybe their father knew about or was part of and it's just kind of like the black family is kind of like notorious for this it might not have been just their grandfather it might just kind of run throughout their entire family this terrible thing this terrible secret or maybe it just started with the grandfather i mean it seems like he's the biggest focus of everything so i don't know because it also begs the question is what else did he build for those other billionaires because that's kind of his thing like obviously he built tricks so you know since like i said with all the stuff that's kind of set up so far it makes it seem like he wasn't kind of a good person i mean we kind of see how i mean we get little tidbits but we see kind of how cameron and john's dad was a little bit how like way he kind of pushed them when they were younger in particular cameron so it kind of makes you think his father must, he must have gotten that from his own dad, and maybe that's just kind of like the black family pushing the boys to be perfect, because it's like, oh, being a magician isn't just about the family business, it goes a little deeper than just being a, a magician on the surface, that there's a lot more depth to that, like, there's kind of deeper secrets buried in me, that's kind of where my mind is immediately, it's kind of has been for a while about this whole situation, but, um, we still don't know, like, what, I'm most likely, what Gunther was kind of, and what it's kind of implying is, like, with Gunther is, like, that basically, even if you follow these secrets, that there's always going to be something there to kind of halt your progress or kind of hinder it, 
hinder it in some shape or form that maybe Alistair had other like kind of workshops of sorts uh, where these clues can be found that are connected to the mystery woman in some shape or form and that any like any attempt to try and go after them will kind of lead to you potentially dying type of thing so kind of like an Indiana Jones type of trap and stuff like that so that's kind of interesting. Also interesting, too, is the whole John situation. Uh, there's that dude. Like, basically, word has gotten around that John's a rat. Immediately, my brain went two places. Either one, the mystery woman is trying to put him in a box, kind of put him in a very bad situation just to see exactly what John will do. But obviously, another big obvious option is Winslow. Because, for one, it had to be someone that knew he was working with the feds for that rumor to start spreading. Someone must have saw him coming in with Kay. And I feel like if anyone, it'd be Winslow because Winslow would want to force him because like he kept saying no to Winslow. It's like, oh, you don't say no to Winslow. It seems like he kind of runs things potentially. I don't know. He doesn't present present him as like self as the dude who runs runs things. But we still don't. I mean, to be fair, it's not like he hasn't sent people after John before. So, but what's impressed about this dude is like, oh, this is just a dude who's going to get stuff for you. It's like, oh man, you got an ally in this. Until the guy literally tried to kill John, but John had covered himself up with the books and took the dude down. But the dude burned in his cell. So, one or two things. Because obviously he calls Cam at the end of the episode. And it's like, yeah, everyone thinks I did it. Because it's like it's, a, it's something that only he could do. It's probably already flown around the prison about him being kind of like the master deception that he is. So it's like, oh, obviously it's a crime only he committed. So one of two things. One, the dude actually did die because the whole thing is a huge setup to frame John to get him even in more trouble. There's that. Or two, the dude isn't really dead. I mean, because going back to the first one, it could also be, you know, tying up a loose end while also framing him. Two, it could also just be like the dude didn't actually die, that basically the whole crime scene was fake, that he's actually still alive. Because he was seen there flicking his lighter and stuff like that. He was talking about John was going to get it. So I'm like, part of me thinks that he might have been part of this and that he might have faked his death, but he might really be dead. Because he probably thought they had other plans, but he ends up being the sacrificial lamb in this situation. So I don't know. That's immediately where my brain went on it. So we we'll kind of have to wait and see in the next episode because it seems like that's what next week's episode is going to be about, which is interesting because they're already trying to uh, clear John's name for one murder outside of prison. Now they got to clear his name for murder in prison, which is going to be very interesting. And he will probably end up finding out about the whole Winslow situation, too. Or, you know, like they'll solve it, but then John will be the one that only one that knows it has something to do with Winslow, and he kind of keeps that to himself. So, which is interesting because, like, obviously, it's probably going to be because it seems who John is. It seems like, you know, obviously, Team Deception was like, yeah, no more secrets, which led to uh, Dina being like, yeah, me and Mike are officially dating, and then Jordan being like, yeah, I have like a crap, I have like a thousand dollars worth of drugs on me. It's like, oh, so when you stole those drugs from that dude, you never did anything with you, just kept them. Interesting. Why you did that? I don't know. So it's just kind of, it's just, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what goes down in the next episode to kind of really get a better, obviously, understanding of that situation. Like, cause I'm very curious to see who ultimately ends up being my money. I'm kind of leaning more towards Winslow, but obviously, like, the whole setup situation makes me think it's got to be the mystery woman. I feel like, I don't know. Why do things this way? I mean, not least, like I said, not unless it's to force his hand to kind of get her a better audience. I mean, would she even be able to kind of really get to him, kind of even have an audience with him? I mean, you know, I guess given enough time, she'd be able to. So that's why my mind kind of leans more to Wins Winslow, but I don't, I don't completely remove the mystery one. Because like I said, it feels more like her tactics, but hey, you know, who we don't really know much about Winslow. So, I mean, he could have set this whole, like, you know, he might be actually a lot smarter than we kind of give him credit for that, you know, has the right kind of connections and stuff like that. Because we also don't know what it is exactly that John got from the dude that got stuff for him. We still don't know what it was exactly and what that was all for. Maybe that stuff is probably going to be used as evidence to be like, oh yeah, obviously John has something to do with this. Like, obviously John had already beaten up the dude earlier today after the dude tried to kill him. So, or that whole thing. So, well, it's also interesting too in this episode, um, Dina got uh, introduced to Mike's uh, kids, uh, Jamie and Diego. So that was kind of interesting because the way Mike said something early in the episode made me think that wasn't going to happen where he was kind of like, oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Almost like he was hesitant in the sense of like, I thought it was like, oh, are things with your kids not good in the sense of like, oh, is it like a custody battle type of situation? I mean, we don't really know what his whole family life situation is. Like, is it like a custody thing or is him and his ex cool? They have like... um God, what's the word for it? Like, equal rights to the situation. Like, oh, he has them sometimes, she has them sometimes type of thing. Like, I thought maybe that's kind of what he was kind of implying, but maybe that's not the case. I don't know. 
Overall, a very good episode, and I'm very interested to see what goes down in the next episode with all of this. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, look like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.